Hello Pokemon Trainers, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium Singles video here on iStarly TV. This is part of my Battle Stadium Singles Spotlight series where I showcase individual Pokemon and their place in the Battle Stadium Singles metagame and talk about what's good about them, how you should use them, recommended sets, etc. Today we're going to start with our first Series 2 Pokemon. So Series 2 has begun and of course, the big deal with that is that the Paradox Pokemon are now legal. And a big deal with that is that means that we're starting today with our first Paradox Pokemon in the series. And this time we're focusing on Roaring Moon. Personally, I think Roaring Moon is one of my favorite of the Paradox Pokemon. Salamence is so awesome. And this is a crazier, scarier, cooler version of Salamence. It's like that one meme where it's like Daniel and the cooler Daniel. This one's Salamence and the cooler Salamence. So anyways, Roaring Moon is scary. This thing, I mean, look-wise, it's scary. Stat-wise, move-wise, it really is everything you'd expect from a dragon type. It's just so good. Let's get into it. Here I have what I think is kind of like the default set for Roaring Moon, which is, of course, going to be Dragon Dance, Outrage, Crunch, Ironhead. As far as the moves are concerned, though, as I always talk about in, this, in these videos, there's a lot of different options you have with Roaring Moon. I think the EV spread is probably where you're going to want to be, though. I anticipate Roaring Moon will be a decently common Pokemon in the metagame, and so I think going max speed with a Jolly Nature is probably where you're going to very often want to be to get the speed tie on other Roaring Moons. 119 is also a really good speed stat. It's faster than a lot of the other new Paradox Pokemon. You know, uh, Iron Valiant, I think, is base 116. Iron Jugulus is 108, even something like Iron Treads is like 106. So a lot of those new Pokemon are going to be slower than Roaring Moon. Although, of course, there are a couple new ones, Iron Bundle and Fluttermane, who are faster than you and each hit you with a super effective move. So those are going to be your biggest threat. You are also slower than Dragapult and even Meowskarata in the metagame. But anyways, as far as typing is concerned, Dragon and Dark, of course, is nothing new. We have Hydreigon, which was really one of the staples of the Battle Stadium Single Series 1 metagame. And you could look at Roaring Moon as kind of maybe like a physical attacker version of Hydreigon, at least as far as the fact that they're both the same typing. But Roaring Moon is really, really strong. It's got 139 base attack, 119 speed, like I mentioned. It's also got a high 105 HP and a pretty solid 101 special defense. So this thing can actually take special hits decently well, which is also really terrifying. Its physical defense is not that great. So something I'll talk about in a little bit as well is most priority moves in the metagame are physical, like Extreme Speed, for example, that's a great example. Sucker Punch as well, although of course you resist Sucker Punch. Um, not too many Pokemon use Mach Punch, but if you're afraid of Mach Punch, that's a move that you I mean, that's a move that you should be afraid of on Pokemon that have it. So yeah, I mean, it's really well-rounded in terms of stats and it also has just a massive attack stat. So obviously you wanna optimize its attack and speed almost all the time. You could try to run a bulky variant, but I just, don't think that's the best option for a few different reasons. One being, again, your low defensive typing, but also, or I'm sorry, your, your low defensive stat, but also because one of your biggest weaknesses is your four times weakness, or well, your biggest weakness is the four times weakness to fairy. And I just don't think you're gonna be taking fairy type moves that well. I guess terrestrialization will help a lot with that. So if you really wanna try a bulky set, there's a, an opportunity for it. You do also get Roost, but I don't think Roaring Moon gets too many other things that really help it with a bulky set. So my point here is most often you're just going to be running max attack and max speed, and I think that's just fine. As for items, there are a few items we'll talk about. Some of these I'm not going to talk about just yet because I have sets dedicated to them. But obviously something like a Life Orb is very good. You already do a lot of damage, and so doing additional damage is not bad at all. You could also run one of these berries. Since you take hits decently well, there might be moments where you survive a hit and then get a little bit of a health boost with the berries. I would personally go for more of the offensive items myself though. Another item that Roaring Moon, like other Paradox Pokemon can take advantage of is the booster energy item, which will basically trigger your ability. And what that does is, let's go to the ability, when Sunny Day is active, 
or when you have a booster energy item, your highest stat is gonna be boosted by 1.3 or 30%, or if it's your speed stat, it's gonna be boosted by 50%. So actually, I, I kind of lied here. Let's talk about a few things. So if you're using booster energy, most often your attack stat is gonna be your highest stat, which I think is something that you probably want. That's something that you're probably happy with because you already have a good speed stat. So by getting an extra 30% boost in your attack stat, you're gonna be hitting things really, really hard. So I think this is basically like a life orb boost without taking damage each turn. Although the big downside though, I think is if you get this boost and then you have to switch out, when you switch back in, you will not get it again. So that's a big downside here. However, and this reminds me of the beast boost from the ultra beasts in Sun and Moon. You might actually want to, I know I said just 252 in both is probably good. You actually, if you want to get that booster energy boost on your speed stat, you can actually run just enough EVs like this so that your attack stat, I think it would actually be right Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, so that your attack stat is lower than your speed. So if you want to run the booster energy to get the speed boost, you can do that and then just run the rest in HP. So this is actually, I guess, another good default moveset. That is if you are going to be running the booster energy item. If you're not running booster energy, then you're just better off going all in on attack and speed. As for the moves, now Dragon Dance is a great move, obviously. Doesn't really need much explanation. If you want, want to just run four attacks, that's also a good option. Uh, Roaring Moon has a lot of great coverage that you would expect from a Dragon type. Outrage, of course, is going to be your default for Dragon type moves. You also have Dragon Claw if you want something less powerful but more accurate, or less powerful but less risky, I guess. Um, as for the Dark type coverage, there's three big moves that each have the same base power, which is base 80. So Crunch is probably a good default one because you have the chance to lower their defense, which can be a big deal. Obviously, that means your future moves are going to be hitting them even harder. But we also have Throat Chop, which is actually decent in the metagame for a couple reasons. First of all, if you're able to hit a Sylveon with Throat Chop, it cannot use Hyper Voice, which basically means if you hit a Sylveon with Throat Chop, it kind of it kind of can't do anything to you and you're free to just kill it or, you know, set up in its face or something like that. So that's a big deal. I believe Yawn is also a sound move, so I sh I'll have to check on that. But if it is, then that's also a big deal because a lot of Pokemon use Yawn, which is pretty annoying. Also, Skeledurge uses, uses Torch Song and Skeledurge is a big threat, especially against physical attackers. Like if, they, if they're Terra Fairy Skeledurge or something like that, you might be afraid of that. And if you hit them with a the Throat Chop, then they're, they can't go for Torch Song anymore. So that could be a big deal. Finally, Roaring Moon has a unique move called Jaw Lock, which is 80 base power, which is a lot, and it prevents you and the target from switching out. So it, no pun intended, locks you both into the battle. This move, I think, has a lot of interesting applications and it's worth considering, but I think most often, I think Crunch is just better. Because for example, in Battle Stadium singles, people switch a lot, right? And so if you have Roaring Moon, which is a super, super scary Pokemon against certain threats and then against other Pokemon, it's maybe not that scary. Like for example, against maybe fairy types, then you're not going to want to jaw lock. Like if you go into Roaring Moon against someone's Goldango, for example, and you're and they're locked into Shadow Ball or something like that, you know they're going to switch out. If you go jaw lock and they just go into like Flutter Main, you're going to want to switch out there as well. So I actually think for the most part, jaw lock is probably more of a liability than a help, but it is something worth mentioning and something to consider if you want. For the last slot, I think some good moves here are gonna be basically moves that hit steel types. So, well, sorry, basically moves that hit Pokemon that can take your hits, which are steel types or fairy types. Iron Head is kind of my default because again, being a dragon and dark type, I anticipate a good amount of fairy types switching into you. And so obviously going for Iron Head against them is huge, but also Earthquake is great, Fire Fang is great, you know, you get a, cu a couple other options, but I think those three are going to be your best bet for the final slot. I guess it just depends on what you want to hit and if your team is well set up to handle uh, fairy types and stuff like that. As for Terra types, my default is going to be Steel. It, it, again, it's very reminiscent of Hydreigon. Of course, Hydreigon has the added benefit of having Levitate, which is a big deal, but I still think Steel is a solid type for Roaring Moon, and it also gives you Stab on that Iron Head to hit even harder. You could also go Terra Fairy if you want. Of course, 
with any of these types, I'm going to suggest you could run Terra Blast unless you're running Iron, uh, unless you're running Terra Steel. I mean, there's also Terra Poison. You know, similar again to Hydreigon. There's also Terra Fire if you want extra damage on your Fire type moves. And Fire is also pretty good against Fairy types. So, well, defensively it is. So there's a lot of good options there. Personally, I would start with Steel. But again, Fire and Dark, or sorry, Fire and Fairy are two other good options. And finally, you could also, of course, go Dragon or Dark to get extra damage on these moves. That's also not bad. So let's talk first about this move set right here. And again, basically, I just want to talk about this. I, I kind of started making a move set, but I just figured like, you know, it's fine to just talk about the move. Loaded Dice is the new item that guarantees that two to five hit moves will always hit four to five times. And of course, you have a, an interesting move in the form of Scale Shot which hits two to five times, sorry, two to five times, and then will lower your defense and boost your speed. So basically you have a 100, at least 100 base power dragon type move with 90% accuracy. Sometimes it'll be 125, which is huge. And it also will boost your speed. I think this is huge for Roaring Moon. So if you wanna run the loaded dice item, I think that's gonna be one of the bigger items to run on Roaring Moon. And then of course, you're always gonna want your dark type coverage, your dark type stab as well. The last two moves can be two coverage moves or you could run like U-turn or you could run Dragon Dance. Um, so this could also be a Dragon Dance variant, but of course I wanted to talk about that. As for the nature, you can always go Jolly. I think that's always gonna be your best bet and your safest bet. However, if you want, you could go Adamant. Since Scale Shot boosts your speed, you know, Adamant is great as well. It means you're gonna hit a lot harder and you're gonna get that speed boost as well. So this just makes Roaring Moon just even scarier. Obviously though, if you're running Scale Shot, you're gonna to wanna to run Loaded Dice, which means you're, you can't run any other item. You can't run Booster Energy, you can't run Life Orb, etc. So yeah, Scale Shot I think is really strong here. Um, you, I still don't think you want Terra Dragon though, just cause it's too risky with all, this, all the Fairy types and stuff and Steel types. But either way, and, and like I said, if you're not running Loaded Dice, you should not run Scale Shot in my opinion, because then again, fairy types are a thing, but also, you know, if you go for scale shot, it's just, well, you could still run it, but there are times where it's gonna be weak. I guess in that case, you would be running it kind of as a pseudo dragon dance that also deals damage, which is not bad. So I, I guess I meant if you're running scale shot, you should not be running a choice item, which brings me to my next set. So of course, Roaring Moon with its high attack and high speed can take advantage of choice band or choice scarf respectively. Either way, again, depending on how, what you want to outspeed and stuff or, or how hard you want to hit, you can go Adamant or Jolly for either of these sets. Also, Roaring Moon gets U-Turn. Really no other Dragon type at the top of the metagame has access to U-Turn. I guess Dragapult does as well, but it's really interesting to see a Pokemon that hits as hard as Roaring Moon also get access to U-Turn because, of course, once again, Roaring Moon is going to force a lot of switches. When you switch it, switch it into something that it threatens out, you can predict the switch and then go for a U-turn again because it also has a lot of Pokemon that can counter it really well. So yeah, Choice Band, Choice Scarf, these are both great items for Roaring Moon. And again, with access to U-turn, that also helps so much because you can you know predict a switch, U-turn out, get a little bit of damage on whatever comes in. If you're Choice Banded, maybe get a lot of damage and then save Roaring Moon for the end when you can kind of clean up whatever's left. So this is a solid option. And finally, we have some extra other options for Roaring Moon. I know I mentioned a couple of these already. Roaring Moon does have a lot of coverage. It has Brick Break, it has Stone Edge, you know, it has Earthquake. So there's a lot of good options. And then of course with Terra Blast, you know, like I said, there's a lot of options, Substitute, Roost, etc. right? Um, so Earthquake's good, but like I said, personally, I, I typically tend to prefer Iron Head for Roaring Moon. Fire Fang's good, but same 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 answer there. You also get access to Taunt, which Taunt is a great move, especially on a fast Pokemon like this. So you could have like a kind of a lead Roaring Moon set that to throw people off because they might not be expecting that. And then of course taunt them to stop them from going for Will-O-Wisp or Stealth Rock or whatever, whatever the case might be. I think Roaring Moon has a decent matchup against a lot of Stealth Rockers, but one of the new ones that might be coming into the metagame is Great Tusk, which is a fighting and ground type. And personally, I actually do not think Roaring Moon has a great matchup against that one. So other, other Stealth Rockers though, I think you're decent against. So that's a good option. Finally, there is Dragon Tail, which is a solid option. It means again, if, if you predict switches, as long as they're not fairy types, you can kind of get a little bit of damage and force them out. Of course, both, I would say both Taunt and Dragon Tail, or sorry, U-Turn and Dragon Tail 
work really well if you have entry hazards on your side. So you'll want to run a Pokemon with like Stealth Rock or Spikes or whatever. But yeah, I think that's basically Roaring Moon for you. I mean, again, it has a lot of other options here, but these are all the things I think are best for it. Now, Roaring Moon, despite the fact that it looks a lot like Salamence and it gets really strong special attacks, it has a really bad special attack stat. So I don't think you ever want to go with like Fire Blast or Hydro Pump or Hurricane on this thing because it just doesn't have the stats to cover it. Um, so this is just more a purely physical attacker. Whereas I think a lot of the other dragons in this metagame could possibly go physical or special if they wanted to. So anyways, yeah, that's Roaring Moon for you. I'm going to definitely make a team with it very soon and try out one of these sets. Personally, I'm leaning towards the scale shot loaded dice combo, but I also really like choice. So I'm probably choice banned just because I like hitting as hard as possible. So anyways, hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave a like. Please subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. It really helps me out if you like and subscribe and of course comment. And I really appreciate it and love reading all your comments as well. Also in the comments, let me know which Pokemon I should feature next. There's a lot of new Paradox Pokemon to talk about and I'm really excited to cover all of them. So let's get to it. See you soon.